Hi everyone, Agnes here. I've got a viewer's question from Suzanne and it goes like this. This is my question. It seems to me an ongoing conscious commitment, no matter how intelligent someone is or how much someone has read, to get in a certain routine daily to prevent emotions from taking over. But please help me here. What can I do or should I do to stay balanced and composed and wise and that I never slip into unconsciousness? I want to stay in this relationship and prevent moments like these and always be in harmony and feeling stable within myself. I certainly want to prevent a breakup even though we never talked about a breakup as love is very strong on both sides. I could, I feel, sabotage something beautiful if I don't change. I believe I must be insecure. It can only stem from that. I also know that emotions aren't me and that I have to learn to separate myself from them. The question is more about what techniques and practices are important and how often I should practice them in order to stay stable and not be thrown off in moments of insecurity. This was a long text. I apologize for it. Okay, so Suzanne, I'm going to go back and I'm going to go through this step by step for you. So it seems to me an ongoing conscious commitment, no matter how intelligent someone is or how much someone has read to get a certain routine daily to prevent emotions from taking over. Okay, firstly, I wouldn't do it daily as in seven days a week. It's too much. People have got jobs or they've got responsibilities or they've got kids or elderly parents or, you know, pets, whatever you've got. Aim for, I think, four to five days a week and that is enough. <laughs> I can hear someone sneezing in the apartment block <laughs> above me. So it is about being consistent, but don't try and run this like a 100 meter race. This is like a, not a sprint, it's like a marathon. You go slow and steady and you pace yourself, okay? So now you're asking, it is an ongoing commitment, yes, I agree. But it isn't about doing too much, too quick, too fast. And it is about having other things in your life. So if you're doing four days a week, then have three days a week off. What do you do on those three days? You let all this stuff go, the techniques, a law of attraction, all that stuff. Go and watch Netflix. Go and walk in the park. Go and have a nice cup of coffee with a friend. Go to a movie, whatever you want to do, but get off it. We need breaks. This stuff's mentally quite tiring. Okay, so that would be my first suggestion. Now you said, what can I do or should I do to stay balanced and composed and wise and that I never slip into unconsciousness? Well, firstly, um, stop having such high standards about never slipping into un unconsciousness. Okay, we're, we're humans, we have emotions. We're, it's not about perfection, it's about progress and it's about doing better over time. I mean, it's, I think, humanly impossible unless you're living in a cave on a mountain with contact with no other people to not slip into something at some point. We do get affected. We are emotional beings and we cannot stay in perfect peace and harmony all the time. Okay, That's the, the human part of us as we interact with people that we get triggered off into certain things. I can tell you in my own life a lot less than 30 years ago but it's still still have to interact with the world you still have to interact with family you still have to interact with if you're in a relationship or you want to be in one you've got someone that you're interested in or someone's coming towards you and you go you know what this isn't my person we get triggered off into certain things now what you can do to create more stability firstly is remembering that other people are not put on the planet to make you feel good let that that be something that you remind yourself of on a regular basis okay secondly it is about like you're saying i want to stay in this pr the relationship and prevent moments like these difficult moments you're talking about because i've read your previous part of your email and preventing obviously a breakup when we go into a lot of emotional stuff in a relationships, the inner child is ruling the roost. Okay, you got to get to the point where you are able to harness your inner child and not let it take over. Okay, you're the adult, the inner child's the inner child. You have to rein it in. Because a lot of issues in relationships 
arguments, outbursts, jealousy, fear, anxiety, um, feeling not good enough and all that stuff. It comes from the inner child. So you need to do some inner child work. You know, you, you have to, if the living in the end's not working enough, the affirmations aren't working enough, the self-love meditations aren't working enough, the inner child is basically kicking your backside and coming out and ruling the situation. You gotta harness that. How do you do that? You gotta offload a lot of those old emotions. How do you do that? You do the inner child meditation, the spotlight meditation. There's Dr. Hugh Len's inner child meditation as well. There's, um, the links will be down below for you to be able to access those. I would do those anytime you feel any negative emotion. I would take some time and process some of those old emotions. Because it's like your body's a suitcase and it's holding a lot of old stuff. And it's like the suitcase can't hold it in anymore because there's too much in there. So even though you put the clips on the suitcase, the suitcase flies open and the stuff flies out. And whoever's in the vicinity ends up copying that stuff. So it does sabotage relationships. If you don't deal with this, it does cause breakups. And it causes you a lot of pain, you a lot of suffering, and the relationship a lot of suffering. So before you get to that point, it's possible to clear the old stuff. Okay, so I would also use the whole Ho'oponopono playlist on my channel. Why? Because I'm reading out of a little book from Ulrich E. Dupree. Ulrich goes through chapter by chapter. There's a little exercise at the end of each one and you can start to process stuff using the Ho'oponopono. Stuff meaning your emotional baggage. Okay, so I'll put all the links down below to all this stuff, of course. Now you said, I believe I must be insecure. It can only stem from that. I also know that emotions aren't me and I have to learn to separate myself from them. Well, sometimes it's hard to separate yourself from them. I think it's about letting them out and not judging them, but removing yourself away from people at that time when you are in some stuff and you feel like, you're just like walking around like a raw pink wound and also you want to vent at somebody or take your anger out at somebody or you've got jealousy, insecurity, anxiety, you're checking people's Facebook or social media, Instagram, whatever. If you're doing any of that stuff, it tells you something about yourself. I'm not saying you're doing that, but this has just come to mind. It means you're in second best mode and I'm not good enough and you're looking for evidence of something. So it's really dealing with your emotions, you see. And dealing with them by processing them, letting them come out of the body, making time for that, laying on your bed, laying in the park, you know, going to the gym, punching it out if it's anger, screaming to a pillow, scream in the car. Don't recommend you do it on public transport, but it is about letting it out, okay? So now you said the question is, more about what techniques and practices are important and how often should I practice them to stay stable and not to be thrown off in moments of insecurity. Well, again, don't set your standards so high that you never get into any moments of insecurity. Being insecure isn't the worst thing. It's when you speak and act from a place of insecurity that does the damage. If you could just be on your own and say to yourself, okay, I'm not going to talk to that specific person or my ex or anyone that I want to be in a relationship with when I'm feeling insecure. I'm going to get myself back on, t on track mentally, emotionally, and then I'll contact them or they can contact me and I will respond. Now, if someone contacts you while you're in the middle of an insecurity or you're in the middle of feeling fear, suffering, hurt, uh, worry, jealousy, whatever that you've got going on that's not a positive emotion, you just send a text and say, hey, I've got some stuff going on. I'll get back to you as soon as I'm finished. They don't need to know it's emotional stuff or mental stuff or old childhood stuff. It's just I'm going, I've got some stuff going on. I'll contact you soon. You don't need to go into explanations. Just deal with yourself quietly. Okay. So thank you, Suzanne. I hope that helps. I would um, work through those things also the self-love success stories playlist people share a lot of stuff about what they did for their self-love as well and if I think of anything else when I upload this I will put the links down below for you to check out all right 
lots of love. I will put the viewers questions playlist down below. It's a big playlist now. I think over 200 YouTubes. But if you would like to look at that playlist, just go through the ones that you like the titles of and just watch those because there's a lot of questions about relationships, a lot of questions about exes, a lot of questions about specific people. All right, everyone, I'm going to enjoy a little bit of a meditation out here today. It's such a beautiful day in London. Very grateful. I'm going to do a bit of gratitude laying on my back on the grass. Lots of love and I will see you as always in the next YouTube.